Coming up on Regarding Men, When Mothers Kill Their Children, Liliana Carrillo. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Regarding Men, where we hold men in high regard and where red pill isolation comes to die. I'm Janice Fiamingo. I'm the author of The Fiamingo File. I'm joined here by my good friends, Tom Golden of Men Are Good. Men Are Good. And Paul Elam of paulelam.com. Hello. And today we are discussing a disturbing story. Uh, it's disturbing because of what we know about it. A mother killing her three children. Mm -hmm. And also, I think, disturbing for uh, what it is not being told about it. Um, much that is left unreported. And I have the sense from it that there is much that we will never know. Uh, partly because this is a is a woman who has killed her children and that this is something that society in general doesn't want to know about. So I suspect this story will die rather quickly, although it is a shocking story. So the, the basic outline is that this woman, Liliana Carrillo, aged 30, uh, seems to have murdered her three children. Uh, they were aged three, two, and six months six months old mm. uh, she drove away after she committed this crime and uh, strange events that seem to have taken place after she drove off she drove north uh, from los angeles into central california we're told that um, she got into some sort of altercation abandoned the vehicle she was driving and carjacked another vehicle it seems to me a uh, quite bizarre element of, of the scene. Uh, anyway, and, and um, what we've learned is that uh, the, this woman was involved in a, well, the, all the newspaper headlines say she was involved in a custody dispute. And what I think that means is that the father of her children had intervened. We're told he had attempted to contact children and family services and the police because she has been acting strangely for months and obviously he was worried about her harming the children uh, and as far as I know there had been a um, I'm not sure what it's called exactly but a custody order had been made she was to turn over custody of the children to him on the Sunday and Saturday was the day that she murdered her, her, her the children. So um, I think that's all we really know. And uh, yeah, the thing that worries me most, I guess, is that I suspect nothing is going to be done really about this story because it's a story that doesn't fit the popular narratives about male violence and the need to protect women. And it's very interesting to me that even in these cases where little children, in this case, two little girl children have been killed, we're not very interested because the perpetrator is female. So we're not really all that excited about it. There will not be demonstrations. There will not be calls for, you know, major studies of what, how the system failed these children um, because it's simply too uncomfortable. I don't know. What do, what do you guys think about mm. this? Mm. Tom? Paul? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think uh, it's another one of these cases when you refuse to recognize the capacity for violence in women, you condemn their children hmm. to being victims of abuse and sometimes death, as is the case here. And I think that is the overarching problem. We still live in a society that refuses to recognize that that women have the capacity for evil every bit as much as men. Yes. And um, so this is going to be, as Janice pointed out, a terribly shocking story that dies a very quick death in the media yeah. uh, mm -hmm. because we can't talk 
uh, about this. I mean, the woman fled the scene in, in most legal areas. You would recognize that as consciousness of guilt, that this is, you know, somebody fleeing from the scene of a, of a horrific crime. And apparently she was willing to go commit more crimes to continue her flight from, yeah. from the scene. And I don't think you're going to see reporting on that. I don't see I don't see the Guardian or anybody else doing uh, lengthy articles about what went on in, in this case. I think it's just another case. These children are dead. They're going to be buried, and society will want to forget about it happening as quickly as possible. I mean, we point this out as a media problem. It's actually a social problem. It's the whole society does not want to hear what happened here now if it had been the father who butchered the sons the way the mother did in this case and who had fled and hijacked a, a car uh, to, to get away um, this would be wall-to-wall coast-to-coast coverage on every media outlet and it would be another example of the evil of men uh, and they would probably try to connect the father to men's rights groups or to a, an incel crowd or to, to something like that to prove it was even more evil. Um, yeah. But no, uh, this mother butchered her children. They said that the first responders that came in, I read, had to get counseling because this scene was so grisly, so horrifying. And of course, it involved a six, six-month-old infant. Um, mm-hmm. Just seeing that, I could understand why people are destroyed and why they might not want to talk about it. Um, but it shouldn't be avoided uh, simply because the murderer happened to be a woman in this case. Oh, but it is. It is avoided. Even in the research, you find that uh, some sometimes it's avoided. You know, the, there's controversy in the research about maternal filicide, which is mothers killing their children, and paternal filicide. And there's one camp that says two-thirds of these uh, killings are done by women. And then there's another camp that says, no, it's about half and half. <laughs> so at least they admit that it's half and half. I mean, that's that's not bad. But I think the, you know, the Resnick is, is the top researcher on this. And he kind of says it's probably two-thirds, I think he says two-thirds women, one third men, but you know, and you you see the same thing with child abuse. I mean, uh, there's more women than men abuse the children, and what's the feminist line to all of that? Oh, it's because women are forced to, to be the caretake, primary caretakers spend, of the children. They spend more time with the kids, so every yes. time I hear that from a feminist, I say, well, that's why. Men murder more people because they spend more time with guns. <laughs> I mean, it's that kind of logic. You just, no, no, you just don't kill someone. It's just crazy. They give excuses all the time, you know? Yeah. And of course, Ugh. the mental illness excuse is, is always used. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, and, and I, you know, I'm not an expert in this area, and I would hesitate to say that somebody who kills their three children isn't mentally ill in some way. Uh, you know, it certainly seems, uh, well, it's, it's, it's beyond imaginable. Um, but in this case, in particular, uh, as you said, Paul, and, and as I thought, you know, she speeds away in a car. I mean, that is just not, I, I, am, I can imagine a scenario in which somebody is so... I don't know, demon possessed or, 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 or just so distraught and delusional that she might do something like this or he. But then I do not imagine that person speeding away in a car, getting into some kind of fight with somebody else. I don't know what happened. The fact that the report didn't like none of the reports, I read a bunch of them, of course, none of them gives any details. They must have the details. And do you know and why can't... they don't give any details? Because... No. The story is, I've read probably maybe 15 articles on this, and only one, in fact, that's another thing, is the reporting on this is so, 14 have the main story, and one out of those 14 will tell you something else. And the something else is this, she wrecked her car, and the Good Samaritan stopped to help her at the wreck. Oh, I see. And she stole yeah. his truck. <laughs> she stole yeah. his truck. The guy that, that actually stopped to help her. Oh boy! So and and yeah. this the, the, you know, the whole thing about 
14 out of the 15 articles I read never mentioned the father. Yeah, yeah. The father had had custody that was supposed to be given to him, right? Yeah. And the, I saw this picture of the father playing with his kids, you know, these little, oh, God, it was just heartbreaking. And this one story out of all of them said, father devastated. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't look at the man's pain. You know, these places just don't want to look at the man's pain. You know, but can you imagine if all of your children were killed? And by the way, there's, there's, I think they have five categories of filicide now. And one of the categories is custody disputes. Mm-hmm. It's literally that often that parents kill their children out of just complete revenge or anger or whatever it is out of custody stuff. Oh, it's just so sad. You know, there's one is mental illness. I think one is um, um, mental illness, another is mental illness, and the other is custody. I mean, it's just, to me, it's just about that simple. It's just also that, mental illness. Yes. You know, I, I, I agree. I, I mean, I can't imagine anybody doing this without serious mental health issues. I know that there is <laughs> such a thing as postpartum depression. And right. that was can, it, and some women even be postpartum psychosis. It absolutely right. happens. Yes. But the legal definition of guilt or, or culpability under the law the only thing you need to establish that the person who did the difference between right and wrong or knew what they right. were doing was right. And just like in the case of Andrea Yates, who drowned her five children and tried to hide afterwards. Yes. Um, and this woman who fled the scene. These are people that know the difference between right or wrong. They know right. that the authorities are going to come for them and that they should. And they run off and uh, like this one, somebody stops to help her and... Uh, I'm sure outcomes maybe the same knife she killed her children with. Could be. And, and, yeah. and got his truck. Um, gosh, this is just a, a tragic story that the media is butchering. And mm-hmm. But in fairness to the media, they butcher it because society wants that. That's, yes. that's what, yeah. Yes. And the other thing that I was really struck by is how the father's role in the children's lives is so minimized when he's even mentioned at all. And he's often mentioned, you know, way down the story. Uh, usually what's mentioned first is that the grandmother, the, the mm-hmm. mother's mother was the one who found the children. And, and so, you know, you really think of this as a story about a single mother, a troubled single mother uh, perhaps with a vindictive ex-boyfriend trying to take her children away from you. That's kind of the angle right. that emerges and, and yes. she distraught then destroys the children. But um, it, what I could piece together, although it is very difficult because there just isn't enough information, that they had actually been living together, up the, the, the man and uh, the father and mother had been living together up until just six months ago. And that she left that family and took her children away. And then there's been this custody dispute since then. So this was a this was not, uh, you know, a kind of absent father who simply impregnated this woman and then went on his merry way, which is the popular narrative of our society. Right. This was somebody who was part of a family. He was happy to be in this family where even one person said that he still loved the woman and he was trying to get her help and you know he it sounds as if he was desperately trying to involve children and family services and the police out of concern for her and for the children that he was very much engaged with in every way and yet that you know you have to really look to find out any of that information and i can't again help but feel that if we lived in a different kind of society that valued men as fathers and as members of families in a different way, that that would be front and center in the story. And yet it isn't, you know, it's it's minimized yes. as, as if it's of really no importance. Yes. Yeah. You can always tell who gets compassion in an article yeah. by whose story mm-hmm. is told. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. And yeah. they don't tell the story of the father. No, this Not isn't his story, bit. really. You know, maybe occasionally somebody will say, oh, he's devastated. Well, okay, that's it. But you don't really learn why. You don't have a sense of who he was or his involvement or anything else. Right. And right. I, and I, yeah, I, that's the thing that is so disturbing is that, you know, there there is no community that is going to stand up and say, what happened? You know, we don't know the extent of 
and what was going on before the extent of this man's attempts to involve family and children's services like we you know and that i doubt we'll ever know and there is no not going to be a community uprising saying how could this have taken place and how can we guarantee that it never will again because there's just not the interest in learning about it yep that's it let's see if we can show a quote from from one yeah. of the articles Denton, who was the father, requested a temporary emergency visitation order from the family court in California on March 4th and petitioned for a mental health evaluation of Carrillo according to court documents. Orders were drawn up March 26th. Hearing Another hearing in the case was scheduled for April 14th. In response, Carrillo sought a temporary domestic violence restraining order against Denton on March 12th. Using VAWA as a means to defend yourself, eh? Uh, pretty stinky. Denton told the Times he tried to get authorities to intervene, but in L.A. they wouldn't help. The LAPD would not get involved, he said. Carrillo was supposed to turn over the kids to him on Sunday. Ay, ay, ay. And I never, I read several articles on this too, Tom, and I never ran across that. I mean, it, it, that was a story that's been absent in yes. all the coverage I went after. Yes. And still lacking. Uh, there's still a great deal. Of, there is much more of a story there. One, if he was awarded custody, there was evidence of something wrong with the mother. Or he would have never been awarded any kind of custody, yeah. uh, especially if she was fighting it, which it was obvious that she was. Yes. As she was accusing, making false accusations, I'm assuming, accusing yep. him of yeah. domestic violence in order to get a leg up. And she still lost. I want to know the more details. What was happening with this woman that had made it so obvious, even to our court system, uh, that she should not have custody of, the, uh, of these children? There is something huge missing from this story. And I doubt that we'll ever read about it. I in think any you're exactly media. right. I think that's exactly right, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Gynocentrism rears its ugly head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, mm, mm. It rears its ugly head, and three children are dead because of it. Yes. And um, that's a story that that really does need to be told. Uh, we just had this discussion uh, in our review of Kramer versus Kramer, uh, and I asserted that in. in the truth, if you really start looking at what goes on in family courts, uh, you run into a lot more problems than was ever expressed in that movie. This is yeah. part of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And it's and it's like it's a societal problem that it really like gynocentrism doesn't even really cover it because gynocentrism, uh, you know, as has traditionally um, uh, been expressed was of course about the care and centering of women as objects of concern and protection but like this is now um it, it's 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 at the point where like some human beings including girls are being sacrificed to our societal well, you already said it, both of you, our societal unwillingness to recognize female evil. I don't think there's ever been a society before, a culture before, that refused to recognize female evil. It could be oh. gynocentric, of course, but it, it strongly differentiated between good women and bad women. Now we can't do that anymore. And it leads to the, you know, the very thing we're looking at here, where we're actually willing to have children sacrificed. And we know that more will be in the future or abused, children abused, because we will not recognize, we won't look at female evil. It's a really quite a profound and bizarre um, end that we've come to in, in yes. our culture. Yeah, that's a really good point. And and what what really gets me about this, and to me it's simple, two plus two equals four. If you refuse to recognize female evil, you are in actuality enabling female mm -hmm. evil. Right. You right. are socializing evil in women. Yes. Um, and gosh, and, and now uh, some of this comes out with dead children, uh, a lot of it uh, more often, I think, comes out to very, very disrupted, harmed lives in adults. Um, 
gosh, it's just an awful situation. And it's awful that we, 2021, we live in a society that just can't talk about a problem, honestly. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah, it is. Crazy, crazy. Mm. No, well. I don't know if there's any more to say. Um, I agree. Yeah. What a horrible, horrible story. Yeah, I think the the major point that both of you made was that, you know, we're not really able to see female evil. You know, and in fact, we're it's gotten even worse than that lately with some political pieces. You're not able to see the evil in them either. You know, it's like evil has become accepted within certain realms. Yeah. Rewarded. Yeah, yeah. Rewarded. yeah. And your your culture is in trouble if you have no discrimination about that. Yeah. You know, in deep trouble. And I think it's safe to say our culture is in trouble. No. <laughs> I know that may be hard for some to believe, but I think we have a few problems. Yes, I think you're right. I think you're right. So, well, on that rather sad note. Yes. Are we finished? Yep. So shall we affirm? <laughs> and how would we do that? <laughs> that men are good two in a and, row and sometimes men are evil yes at least we can see it and deserve to be punished for it you know yeah now if we can only apply that fairly and evenly to, to all people, everyone we might, yes we might be getting somewhere but yes, I exactly. <laughs> oh, well i guess we'll have to wait and see how things turn out join us on regarding men folks regarding men.com forward slash join read all about it come join the group seven days a week we're having a blast in there we're also seeing a lot of healing in there a lot of oh, people man it's fantastic lives, uh, subscribe star subscribe star.com yep. slash regarding dash men come on and see us link below as paul would say mm -hmm. <laughs> all right y'all take care We'll see bye you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.